Hi, my name is Kevin Fernandez and welcome to my channel, Gamers Genie. Today, we're going to be talking about my top 10 favorite pirate themed games. Um, now, I want to point this out. My wardrobe, I know I usually wear stuff that like kind of matches what's going on. So if you guys kind of recognize this shirt, it's based around One Piece, the famous manga series by Ichiro Oda. Um, and, uh, you know, it's all about pirates. They are pirates, but it's like very, very whack, wild and creative. I'm sorry I don't have like a traditional more pirate thing going on here. Um, I, I knew I should have went for the Jolly Roger, but whatever, whatever. Um, so this time there are no rules to this list because um, a lot of the games that I do like... Uh, they don't real. They're not in print anymore. They're or they're pretty rare. Uh, but I've played all of the games on this list. I want to point that out. Uh, one of the major things is though. Once again, it has to be the main game that had the pirate theme, not like an expansion or something like that. Because I know. Um, oh man, Heroescape didn't do pirates. Dang. That would have been cool. Um, never mind. But I do know there are some games that have expansions that add pirates in as they go, like Catan. The Settlers of Catan, they did it. Dominion did it. Um, it, it pirates aren't the central theme, but there's pirates in there and everything. Yeah, Catan definitely did that. Um, but anyways, let's count down. Okay, so my number 10 is a classic with a twist. It is Battleship, Pirates of the Caribbean edition by The Op. And, um, I mean, what's there to say about Battleship? You get the little pegs, you put them in, you know, a white peg is a miss, a red peg is a hit. And, you know, there's always some sneaky, there's always some sneaky, you know, opponent that tries to go, um, like you say, you know, you say S12, and they go, hit. And then you name, like, every single number combination that's next to that, and they go, miss. And you go, how is that possible? How did I miss all around that one spot where your ship, clearly your ship is, unless you got like a little buoy just floating around up there. And then you go, that's exactly it. That's exactly what it is. It's just a buoy. It's not a battleship at all. But then you like, you, you kind of go look, look and you go, yeah, I can see it right there. And they go, you're cheating. I'm like, you cheat. And then you go, you cheated first. But anyways, battleship's really fun. The pirate, I believe the Pirates of the Caribbean theme was based off of the first movie, um, Curse of the Black Pearl, because when that became like a big hit, they started marketing that like there was no tomorrow. Like, I think everything came out that was Pirates of the Caribbean. I think he even remember walking past the game section of Toys R Us. Oh my gosh, that brings back memories. And it was just Pirates of the Caribbean banners from like the minute you walk there to the minute you leave. But anyway, time for, so that is number 10, Battleship Pirates of the Caribbean edition. Okay, so number nine is Jamaica by Gameworks. Um, Jamaica is a, a really, is a pretty fun game. I, you know, I'm not going to try to mention the rules that much because I don't want to butcher the rules. It is fuzzy. I need to get my own copy so that way I can play it and kind of remember the rules and everything. Some of the, I should point out, some of these games I'll remember the rules. Some of these games I won't remember the rules. But um, Jamaica, it's really fun. It's enjoyable. Um, great artwork. Uh, I believe it's pretty quick. Um, yeah, you know, well, Gameworks, I'm a big fan of their games. So, um, that's why it's number nine is because I don't quite remember a lot of the gameplay on it. Um, if you guys know, like, a, a place where I can play it online, get re-familiar with it, um, uh, let me know in the comments below because I'd love to get re-familiar, uh, uh, familiarize myself with this game again. But, uh, that is why number nine is Jamaica. Jamaica. 
Okay. Uh, number eight is a game that Jordan wanted to play her first Gen Con. It's called Dead Men Tell No Tales by Minion Games. And what it is, is you are pirates on a ship that's on fire and is sinking. And you are trying to fight back and escape the ship at the same time. Uh, and you, and we played it on easy and we died like that. I mean, it was just a slaughter fest. And then Jordan said, well, I'm never going to play this game again. Um, I kind of want to play it again just to see if I can try to beat my record or something like that. And I don't think we kind of got the rules down. You know, I feel like it's one of those things where it's like when you get, once you get the rules down, then you play uh, better. Not a guarantee that you're going to win, but, um, you know, you could do better. So, number eight, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Okay, my number seven is Tiny Epic Pirates. Now, Tiny Epic Pirates has not come out yet, and it's by Gamelin Games, for those of you who are not familiar with that. Tiny Epic Pirates has not come out yet, but I've played a lot of the other Tiny Epic stuff, and that's why it's number seven on this list, because I know Tiny Epic, sometimes they're similar with the rules, not the same, similar, and I've already played, like, Tiny Epic Westerns, and I've played, you know... Some of the other Tiny Epic, I played the Tiny Epic quests and stuff, and I, I do love Tiny Epic. And Pirates, man, come on, come on. But that's why I put it up at the high stuff. You know, number five and below are usually the games that I've played multiple times and everything like that. Tiny Epic Pirates, I, I also want to let people know that the other reason why I added this on there is because I wanted to let people know that, uh, you know, it exists or it's going to exist. Um, but I want to point out one little tiny detail. Um, I want to point out because a lot, it was really, really hard because I was starting to get into dark territory. Pirates of the Caribbean Uno, Pirates of the Caribbean Monopoly, Pirates of the Caribbean, you know. So it was either going to be Pirates of the Caribbean or it was a expansion for something that makes something pirates. And I, you know, I don't like doing that. So. That's why number seven is Tiny Epic Pirates. Now, number six is one... It's not number six because I kind of played it, I, but not really. I know the rules very well, though. And that is Treasure Island by uh, Madagot. I hope I'm saying that right. I hope I'm not, like, butchering the company's name. But Treasure Island, what it is, is you... Uh, one player is playing as Long John Silver, and the other players are playing as, I want to say, like, you know, your Squire Trelawney, Dr. Livesey, uh, Jim Hawkins, Captain Smollett, the, the good crew of the Hispaniola. Um, like, the five people that were actually good. Because, like, either by the time Long John took over the ship, Either that's when you knew, like, pretty much the whole crew was bad, except for two, which were Captain Smollett's most trusted men, but then the pirates paid them off, so, and they took it hook, line, and sinker, so, yeah, there we go. <laughs> but anyway, the game is about, you're trying to find Long John Silver, and you're, you're, like, searching, and you got, like, a dry erase board, and the thing is, the person who's Long John Silver is telling you truth, and then sneaking lies in every now and then. They're giving you clues, but they're sneaking lies in every now and then. So you could be like, you could fall for those lies and find find out that he's not where he says he is. Um, yeah, but that that's really fun. The one thing, the one concern I have about that, though, is that it has a dry erase board. And as much as I like dry erase boards with stuff, I don't know. I feel like anything that involves writing always has its problems. You know, like... If it has a pad and, and pencil, well, then you run out of pad. Um, they kind of solved that with the Internet and that you could just keep printing out more. But a dry erase board is eventually the marker could start, you know, permanently staying on the board. And no matter how hard you scrub, 
it's you could scrub until your arm's sore, and then like you have like this one big bulgy muscular arm, uh, and it won't do that. But uh, this seems like it does come off very well. I don't know if any of you guys own Treasure Island. I don't own it, but I played it. Um, put me th put it down in the comments below on how well the dry erase stuff works. With that, I'm, I'm very curious because this is definitely a game on me and Jordan's list that we've been wanting to get for a while, but we're still like ga gathering information about it. So we kind of just want to hear your thoughts and your opinions about that just want that one aspect of the game. We already kind of are curious enough to want to get the game. So, but number six, Treasure Island. All right, number five is, now we're getting into the, the deep stuff, the stuff that I've played a lot. Um, number five is the Pirates Constructible Strategy Game. Um, it was first re released as Pirates of the Spanish Main. And what it is, is you get like this pack. It's about the same, about maybe a little more bigger than a pack of cards for like magic or something like that. You can always get these at like Target or Walmart. Um, or with kids, um, and I got I got a lot of these on Troll and Toad back in the day. Um, but what it is is you get this little pack, and you can get like ships, and you can get and they're like famous ships too. Uh, some of them are famous, some of them are just made up. So you get ships, you get cat, you can get crew, you can get items, all sorts of stuff, and it always includes like some more islands and everything. And how you play this game is you have like this your ship's card. And you can go a long way, so there's like a white line, and then there's like a red line. A, a white line is so that way you can sail a long way, but you can only like sail straight. You can only sail in a straight line. You can't take that many turns. You can kind of like angle it a bit, but you can't just like fully turn around. Um, and then you can go a shorter way. And the goal is to try to collect treasure onto your ship and then when your cargo is full, you have to return to your home island and then, and let out and you know empty out your cargo. But your opponents can come alongside you and start firing their cannons um, to steal your treasure and everything. And it is super fun. I always played as the cursed pirates when they they brought out that cursed expansion. I played as the cursed pirates, and my favorite favorite ship to use was the flying Dutchman. I had the flying Dutchman and I had Davy Jones. And then later on, they added in the Pirates of the Caribbean um, characters and everything. I did not like how they made Davy Jones a pirate and didn't keep him cursed. And you could just have him as like a different skin, but whatever. Beggars can't be choosers. Um, but, you know, then you could add like the Black Pearl in there. You could add, you know, the Endeavor. You can add, and add in, you know, all the different ships from... Um, from the movie, which was really fun, and um, you know, uh, I believe my last game I played, and I mean, actually mean this was the last game I played, like we stopped playing this game afterwards, um, was it was my brother Keith, my dad, and then me, and me, and he had the, I believe it's called the Endeavor, he had the Endeavor, which was that big ship at the end of World's End with all the guns and everything that a lot of people heavily criticized because he had all, that many guns and just kind of sat there. And so the I had the Flying Dutchman and Keith had the Black Pearl. We kind of like cornered him uh, right there and then we just blew him out of the water and we split the treasure 50-50 because you can do that. You can team up and you can um, you can split the treasure 50-50 but then you could betray somebody. Man, that should have been in my kind of cooperative games list. Oh well. So <laughs> number five. Pirates Constructible Strategy Game. All right, number four is Pirate Flux by Looney Labs. Now, I've played normal Flux. I've played all sorts of other versions of Flux. And Flux is kind of one of those games, in my opinion, is you played one, you kind of played them all, but I like Pirate Flux the most. Um, kind of. Um, and honestly, I do love Flux. That's one of the reasons why it's number four. I love Flux. I love the I love the pirate theme and everything. I don't know what I can say about Flux that hasn't already been said. So I'm just going to leave this one kind of short 
and say number four is Pirate Flux. All right, number three is Pirate's Cove. And a little part of me is kind of like going, should I made this one Pirate's Cove? Because it's been a long time since I've played Pirate's Cove. Um, but, ooh, wow. Yeah, my mind's going blank here. Um, I, you know, knowing Days of Wonder, you're pirates, you're going to islands. I'm going to just leave it at that. I'm going to leave it very basic. Um, but, as usual, Days of Wonder, great artwork, great rules, um, pretty great materials and everything, you know. They, they go for quality. Uh, I do know that you can still get this game, but it is pretty expensive because it is out of print. Um, so, if anybody's got that, we need to get that back into print because uh, I kind of want to get myself a copy of that. So I can get reassociated with the rules and everything. And uh, yeah, number three, Pirate's Cove. All right, number two is Libertalia. Now, I have played this one recently, so it's not going to be as bad as Pirate's Cove. Um, I know for a fact, I've seen this on tabletop um, with Will Wheaton. And I played this on Board Game Arena. And um, what it is, is you kind of are building a crew as you go and everything. And you're, um, you know, you're kind of sabotaging. You're trying to get as much treasure as you can, but you're trying to sabotage your opponents by having them take the cursed tikis and stuff like that. So you can end up with, like, more points at the end, and they'll, they'll get, like, negative points uh, towards the end of that. It's... Um, it's by uh, Mara Bunta, um, and, uh, and I know I'm pronouncing that one pretty correctly. And it's a really fun game. Um, I'm, it's a little sad that not many people are playing this more. Um, but I remember when it first came out, it was the talk of the town. A lot of these games kind of were the talk of the town when they first came out. That's, how, that's the board gaming world for you, you know. Um, but liber number two, Libertalia. All right, number one. This one is definitely a big favorite of mine, and we've taught it on this channel. It is called Extraordinary Adventures Pirates by Forbidden Games. And it's right there. Right there. Right behind me. Um, and uh, Extraordinary Adventures is a fun, fun game. It is a racing game. It is a treasure collecting game. you got to collect items. You got to collect. It's a set collecting game. It's, it, it stands up to the procedure of Forbidden Games where it's three different things, three different mechanics in one, in one game, which I love and I love the balancing. I love playing the advanced rules where you have to like pick up pirates and then you can sometimes even pick up your opponent's pirates and have them as hostages and then you can take like these different kinds of materials and trade them in for treasure and the one with the most points wins, but also if you get to the, the end, you get bonus points depending on how many players you've, you've played with. Um, it is super fun. Uh, I hope they come out with an expansion for this to like maybe add more players or add more to the, to the fun, because I know uh, Railroad Rivals and Raccoon Tycoon, which are all right behind me, um, they all, they both have expansions. You have Fat Cat and you have, uh, the Rubber Baron. And I'm hoping Extraordinary Adventures comes out with an expansion. Um, I'm super excited and I hope that that happens because I do love this game. It's super fun. Jordan loves this game. She thinks it's super fun too. Um, and, uh, one of the best parts is, the company, Forbidden Games, is in Palatine, Illinois, which is not that far from where I live. So, Forbidden Games, look me up. You know, let's let's work something out here. Um, but, yeah, it is great. Uh, it's a deck builder game, too. So, you can get, like, you can get, like, um, you know, first it's kind of like the normal cards that you can just get normally are just kind of like, you know, enemy British... Um, sailors, 
that you kind of have hot, take as hostages and they join your crew because they don't want you to kill them. And then the other, then you can, or you can get more advanced cards, which can give you a big, big advantage towards your opponent. You can also get treasure chests, which can give you a bonus towards scoring and everything. It is super fun. That is why it is number one on this list. Extraordinary Adventures Pirates. Well, that is my top 10 favorite pirate themed board games. Um, if there are any pirate themed board games that I missed or that maybe I haven't heard of or that you liked, uh, that you like, put it down in the comments below. If there's a different order you would have put these games in that I just mentioned, put them in the comments below as well. I'd love to hear your, let's have a conversation about this. Love to hear your opinions. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Uh, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to be notified for videos just like these. Uh, you can also follow me on all my different social media platforms. That's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, since 2020, Games Corner. Games Corner is a new social media platform that is specifically designed for board gamers. Um, there are uh, you know, there's not that much pressure for you to have like, you know, X amount of followers, which is uh, a little bit of a breath of fresh air. And so many different people who love this hobby very much all get together and we discuss games. Super fun. I still haven't really figured out all the different bells and whistles of the game and they, of the platform. And um, they always are adding new stuff and they're always working on stuff. So head on over there. You can follow me if you want. Uh, if you don't want, that's perfectly fine. We're okay with that. Um, but definitely, definitely check them out and help support these, uh, these gamers. Come up with a platform, a social media platform where gamers can hang out and talk games. Uh, be on the lookout for our next top tens list. But until then, thanks for the views.